Good morning. Buenos días. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Anyaseyo. Oh, hakakahakia. Welcome back to the vlog. Today is colonoscopy day. As you could probably tell, I did not sleep very well. I have a lot of gurgling going on everywhere. And I'm not going in the bathroom. It's really strange. Um, it's all very uncomfortable. Um, a little sore. My abdomen is sore. Unfortunately, this morning, it is 6.35 and I have to continue taking that laxative because I did go a little bit. And the instructions do say that your stools have to be odorless and colorless. It's a little bit of color, just like a teensy little bit. So I'm just gonna take like a cup or two and sure that there's really nothing there. Then I also have to take some Simethicone tablets. They're basically anti-gas. That's kind of new for me. I've never taken any pills before going into a colonoscopy, so I'm hoping this won't set anything off, trigger anything. It'll be okay. I mean, I've taken anti-gas before, and it, it, it does not work for me, but it's in the instructions, so I don't want, I don't want to show up and have something happen and then have to admit, no, oh, I didn't take the pills, you know? So it's better to just follow instructions. We're gonna be leaving at around 9.30 because check-in is at 10.30. Um, they also called and told me the first time that my husband could not be with me, which is also very new for me. I'm always with my husband before and after this procedure. Uh, he's always with me um, during that prep time when they start the IV. If I still have to go to the restroom, he accompanies me. Then after the procedure, uh, I'm in recovery alone, but as soon as I wake up, they call him to come in. That's not gonna happen. He helps me get dressed. That's not gonna happen. He helps me go to the bathroom again. That's not gonna happen. Uh, he's actually gonna pick me up in front of the hospital. They're gonna wheel me out or something. I don't even know how that's gonna happen. Okay, here's the other thing. Uh, they used to use Demerol on me for sedation and it was a no-go after a while because I couldn't wake up from it. Then they started using Propofol, Propofol which is actually really good. Um, it just made me drowsy, like a really heavy-duty Benadryl. And today they're gonna use Fentanyl, which I've never used. And I'm praying that it's like Propofol because I don't know what to expect. I don't have issues with sedation. I've had two surgeries before. I've had several colonoscopies and endoscopies, but never with this, uh, this medicine. So cross your fingers and hope with me that it'll be okay. I'm gonna take my 16 ounces of the laxative right now, drink some grape juice and hope for the best. Okay, I'm back. I'm fairly certain I'm good for the procedure. I'm so cold, I'm rethinking my outfit. So something else I wanted to tell you, um, it's all in the details. As you can see, I have a side ponytail today because you're gonna be laying on the bed. So if you put a ponytail on the back or a braid, it's gonna be right there. It's gonna be very uncomfortable for your neck and for your nape. So I always do side ponytails, side braids, something like that. Um, I'm wearing a dress today because it's going to be the easiest thing for me to take off and put on, especially since I'm going to be by myself and oh, I don't want a nurse to oh, have to help me. Um, but I'm so, so cold and I'm in my house, which is set to 79 degrees going to a hospital. I think I'm going to freeze. So I may have to change my outfit to wear pants. I can't even tell you how many times I've been to the bathroom. This is the past hour. I'm so cold. I'm standing out in the sun so they're not as purple as before, but oh, I'm gonna stand out in the sun as much as I can. You know, even as miserable as I feel right now, I'm not gonna use the word miserable because I did do this once before while bleeding. I had three ulcers, so I can bear this. This is fine. Don't mind the hair I was sitting on my husband's lap because I needed some love. I finally stopped going. I was showing you that I have about a quarter jug left, which is okay. It's not coming out super clear, but I don't think it ever has really. Just as long as it's not dark, I think it's fine. I'm tired. The last time I was sitting on the toilet, I was actually like, I don't know how to say this in English, cabeceando. Since I only have about 10 minutes to drink something else, because I can drink some um, clear, clear liquids up 
to two hours before my check-in time, not my procedure time. Um, my check-in's at 10.30. I'm just gonna have some grape juice instead of coconut water because I've had quite a bit of coconut water already. And just have that because they also said they needed to do a pregnancy test before starting just as a double security measure. Even though I told them I'm on my period, they still said, well, you know, we have to write down that you denied or declined the, the pregnancy test. I'm like, it's fine, I'll do it. So I do need some fluid in my body. I was able to take a power nap on the love seat. I literally just kind of conked out. Anyway, uh, last thing I grabbed, some medical face masks that my dad got me when we were in Puerto Rico last year. Um, I couldn't find my mask, the one with the butterfly, so he got me these to travel. Mind you, this was in November, no, December. We went in November, left in December. So I was wearing masks way before COVID hit. So I'm completely used to this, which is what I was telling you when this whole thing started. In this bag, I also have an extra, um, oh my gosh, I can't think anymore. Playa Sanitaria. Uh, reusable menstrual pad i forget what it's called a sanitary napkin whatever uh one of my reusable ones um uh uh, uh whatchamacallit i have no words oh my goodness it's like a baby wipe but precisely for feminine care um i also have a hand lotion i also have a an emergency bag this one is my hospitalization bag now i'm not expecting anything terrible to happen but just in case, because I have had complications with other things, never with a colonoscopy or endoscopy, but you know, you just go prepared. This We live pretty far away from where we're going, so we don't want my husband to have to come all the way back and everything, so we just go prepared. Emergency hospital bag, my personal belongings bag, our lunch box right over there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, face max, te cogí una médica in case you have to go inside. I'm gonna actually double mask. It's the butterfly one in the car. And that's it. There you go, I'll see you all at the hospital. This is why you leave a lot earlier than you're supposed to for something important. According to the GPS, it only takes 35 minutes to get from where we live to the hospital. But look what we ran into. There's something up there. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. Oh, some sort of construction. Fantastic. You guys, this is so good. Wow. I don't know if you can hear me. They took my phone away because they said that it was going to be really quick. But I've been waiting for a while, so I stole my phone. <laughs> I put it in this bag. And they put it under the bed. So I just, I took the bag from under the bed through here. <laughs> and took my phone. <laughs> I've been talking with my husband. But I mean, come on. I got nothing to do and I'm just waiting. I took this one. I told her not to, but she took it. It seems to be working. Let's hope that it doesn't blow. Anyway, just waiting here. Don't know how long it'll be, but I'll see you on the other side. I've never seen a hospital so empty. 
Not everybody can come inside as well. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, bon après-midi, bon pomeriggio, nyanaseyo, aloha. I came all the way over here to check. Avakea, aloha, avakea. I had to write this down because I just could not remember them. Welcome back to the vlog. Yesterday, I did not record a single thing because I did not do a single thing. I spent the entire, entire day with a horrible migraine that would not go away. A little bit of nausea. The nurse from the procedure called to check up on me. You know, a little follow up. I told her about the migraine. She said it wasn't a typical side effect of the procedure, but the fact that they used 100 mcg of fentanyl and uh, some doses of IV Benadryl because apparently I wouldn't stay still throughout the procedure uh, could cause some migraine. So to hydrate very well and give it about 24 hours before calling the doctor to see if he wanted me to go back in or take something or do something else. You guys, I took Tylenol twice. I took two acetaminophen twice. I had my migraine cap on until it melted. I had another ice pack on my head for a while. I put peppermint oil around my temples, my forehead, the nape of my neck as well. I put on some aromatherapy in the living room. Blinds were closed, lights were off, TV was dimmed, volume was low. It was, nothing was working. I took naps and it wasn't until I think it was my mom who said something on the phone or Gabby said something. I don't know, I'm really fuzzy. Um, I remembered that for my infusions, they give me a mix of acetaminophen and diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, as a pre-med to my infusion. And I remember that, so I took two. I took two 25 milligram Benadryl, completely knocked myself out. And when I woke up at around 7 p.m., migraine was finally gone. I am not telling you to treat your migraines with Benadryl. I'm just telling you that it's something that worked for me. So please do not go taking something that worked for me as, as a recommendation. Talk to your doctor first, see if it's an option for you because also some people react differently to Benadryl. Some people get hyper on it. I fall asleep with it. As you can see, I still haven't showered. I still have tape on from the little sensors that they put on you. Um, my hair is a mess, my, my lips are dry, my pimple popped, I don't even know how. Speaking of not knowing how things happened, um, I don't remember anything. I have bits and pieces put together from the time I woke up, <laughs> which was so funny when I got home and realized that I recorded a little bit of my recovery. I don't remember that. I don't remember how I got my phone. I don't remember turning it on. I remember asking for extra crackers and juice. I remember being taken to the bathroom so I could change. Um, and I remember sitting on a wheelchair, but I don't remember getting to the car. I don't remember being in the car. I don't remember getting home. I don't remember going to the couch. I remember waking up. My husband woke me up to give me some dinner. I was awake for about two hours and fell asleep again. Then yesterday was just ugh, horrible. So yeah, you definitely cannot be alone after heavy sedation because you feel, it really does feel like you're awake that you're conscious, that you're completely aware of what's going on. Moments later, you wake up and try to remember, it's just not there. You can't, it's just completely blank. My husband told me that's exactly what happens when you're blackout drunk or you're hungover. I experienced both things. The blackout drunk was me not remembering anything, just bits and pieces. And the hangover was the horrible migraine, the nausea, the general blahness. And since I don't drink, I've never had alcohol. I've never experienced this kind of thing. So he told me, you just experienced it. That's exactly it. As you can see today, I woke up fairly better. I'm not gonna say a little bit better, but I'm not completely better. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, I do feel very tired. My head feels heavy. It's not a headache, it's not migraine. It's just like, I feel like I haven't rested. Before I go make my lunch, let me tell you on today's agenda, I have obviously a shower to take off all the tape and all the ickiness from yesterday. And I have a promo to do for my home business. 
right there. I got quite a bit of work to do, but I'm easing back into my routine. I am, um, I, like I told you, I took care of the household stuff. I paid some attention to my dogs. Now I'm gonna have lunch calmly to then take a shower, get somewhat ready. I'm not even gonna get that dolled up to record that promo and then I'll deal with all that stuff tomorrow. I'm just gonna do small things today when you're in recovery. If you feel like you can't do stuff, just don't overdo it. I'm gonna work mostly on my computer today, so I'm gonna get comfortable and work on my vlog, work on my posts, scheduling them. I'm not gonna deal with classes or anything else, just easy stuff, little by little. All right, you guys, this is something I don't get to share with you every day. I signed up for a USO virtual event. The USO hosts a lot of events throughout the year, and obviously with COVID, everything is um, is virtual. I wanna try to show you. Oh, they're letting me in. I'm gonna show you who it's with. Ah, it's with Seth Green. Ah, so excited. I can see the USO guy is already talking, probably introducing him, so I'm gonna let you go and enjoy my live chat. <laughs> <laughs> 